So I'm going to be talking about self-harm, specifically about cutting. Now, there are other behaviors that one can consider as self-harm. Other behaviors such as uh, excessive drinking, binge drinking, reckless driving or unsafe sex. Uh, the reason why I would like to um, talk about cutting is because it's very prevalent among young females, specifically between the ages of 14 and 19 years old. Now, it's becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, I think young f females, they see their peers through social media and other forms of communication doing this, cutting. Cutting is usually defined as a self-injury that is committed to the body with no suicidal intention. Of course, this behavior could deteriorate over time and people who cut may uh, develop into having suicidal ideation, but the correlation is not necessarily there, the intention is not necessarily there. Who is doing self-harm? Why are people self-harming? This seems to be very counterintuitive to harm their own body. And that's the questions that parents would ask if they find out that the daughter is uh, cutting. They would tend to panic because as parents, parents would have this instinct to protect their child. And the moment that they find out this, they might really panic. Um, how can I protect her? How can I stop this behavior? Now, I would like just to give parents a few insights on why people do this and what could be the underlying causes leading to self-harm. In the past, it used to be a sign of something more severe, such as sexual abuse. Why do I say in the past? Because as I said, it's becoming more and more common. So nowadays, what I see in my practice is that teenagers are doing this, maybe because they are simply experimenting. They are doing this a few times and eventually they grow out of that. It could be a sign that they are struggling with relationships, with academics. It could be like growing pains of growing older, of going through teenage years, trying to get their own identity, entering adulthood. All of these can be quite painful in a way, it can lead to sort of people nowadays, they feel it, especially young girls, inadequate. So they might have this emotional, psychological pain that they don't know how to deal with, they don't know how to control. And the moment that they cut, it gives them this illusion that they are in charge. They are in charge of their own pain. They are imprinting the pain to the body. Uh, and, and that gives some sort of relief that it's a momentary relief. Is, um, it's something, of course, that it's problematic because it can lead to medical complications. Sometimes people need to get stitches or it gets infected. Not to mention that usually people feel ashamed. I've seen uh, young adults who still have scars from cutting and they feel ashamed of showing the new boyfriend the certain parts of the body. Some people consider self-harm as well as an attention-seeking behavior. In my practice, I don't see this so much. I think it's usually people who self-harm, they do this privately and they hide their scars. Sometimes it takes a long time for parents to even find out that the daughter is, is self-harming. Uh, if you ever find that your child is cutting, my advice to you would be not to panic, but to take this seriously to be open, to talk, to be supportive, and, and if necessary, to suggest that your daughter should or could seek help from a counselor, from a psychologist. A psychologist would uh, be experienced in the topic, would be able to offer other coping strategies, help your daughter with other coping strategies, but also give this uh, confidential and safe environment your daughter might be reluctant to talk to you simply because she doesn't want to bur burden you with this problem. Uh, so that would be my advice for parents.